Hi everyone, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this explainer video, I'm going to show you how to connect your iPhone, your iPad, pretty much any Apple device that you might have, connect it to the computer and allow MIDI data from any MIDI controller you see here, in this case a keyboard or it could be a drum machine, pretty much anything, MIDI to be sent from the device that is already connected to your computer into your smartphone or your iPad or tablet. And here's what's cool. You're going to then be able to record the audio of this particular smartphone or iPad or tablet back into your DAW. A DAW is basically digital audio workstation or a music production software in short. For example, you might have Logic, you might use Pro Tools, you might use Cubase. We are going to use a software called Reaper, which is really good. So we'll explain everything in Reaper, but please note that you can do this with pretty much any DAW out there. So let me walk you through what we learn in this particular lesson. First of all, we are going to look at all the devices you need and how to set them up. Then we look at how you're going to set up your operating system. In this case, I'm using Mac. However, you can do this on a PC as well with a few other third party apps. But on the Mac operating system, everything is inbuilt. And then lastly, I'll show you how to set it up in the DAW. In this case, Reaper, which we are using, but it could be pretty much anything. So before we get started, it'll be awesome if you can consider hitting that subscribe button and turning on the bell icon for regular notifications. Let's get cracking. So first of all, you have an iPad with you and you have an app. So in this case, I'm just going to open up a couple of apps. So this is an app called Jordan Tron, which is really cool for synths, orchestra sounds and also pianos and so on. It's a really good app made by one of my favorite keyboard players from the band Dream Theater, Jordan Rudess. Now you could also open up the traditional garage band or you could look at a piano app like Piano Tech. Garage Band is free by the way. So if you have an iPad, you're going to end up having Garage Band, which has some fabulous sounds. Uh, or you might have an iPad app which gives you very tactile control. Like for example, this oboe sound. Now I can get that, that volume, that volume glide or that bend of the note just with my finger on this glass surface, which you can't really do on a keyboard. There's no feeling other than, <clears throat> you know, the pressing the key and just waiting for it to drop. Yes, you can bend, but that's the pitch bend. So you can't really use the pitch bend for very fine control of that instrument. So I use this app called GeoShred, Jordan Tron in a lot of my productions. So. The first thing I thought to myself was, okay, I have to connect this gadget to my computer. What's the old school way of doing it and will that work? Well, obviously it will work. The old school way of doing it is to use a Y cable, a simple Y cable because you want stereo. Number one, I'm sure we'll all agree that most of the virtual instruments will be heard the best in stereo. That would mean a separate left track and a right track, which will be panned LR. Uh, mono will not sound that great. In fact, mono may not even sound as good as what you're hearing it from your iPad itself. So in this day and age of more modern devices, which have USB-C, lightning and other uh, connectivity, you might want an adapter <clears throat> and then this breaks out into a TRS jack and from the TRS jack you could connect a Y cable and then connect that Y cable into your audio interface. Now the challenges that could occur are pretty obvious. Number one, you're going to take up two channels on your audio interface. So if you have a smaller audio interface like a Focusrite 2i2, your two inputs are already gone. Then how will you record vocals? How will you record guitar and other such things, right? So you don't want to take up too many channels. And number two, with cables, with an additional set of connections, especially coming from <clears throat> devices like phones and iPads, they are not built for professional grade sound 
reprodu reproduction. So if you take the output of the iPad, you probably will then need a DI box to kind of match the impedances and uh, make it sound professional. So why bother about all that? Why not get the true sound of this device into your DAW, making a track and here's what, not a single audio cable. No XLRs, no TS, nothing. Just the charging cable that comes with your device. So in this case, I have my iPhone charged up and anyway, it could use some charge. It's barely on 20%, I think. So I connect my iPhone to my computer to charge it, of course. And this cable, the beauty of this charging cable, uh, in my iPad, it's a USB-C cable. So the beauty of these two uh, cables is it's not just going to charge and give the devices power it's also going to send audio from themselves to the mac and it's also going to receive midi from the mac or the computer or the daw or your keyboard into it so once you've got your devices connected to your computer just verify that they are charged up and ready you may may have to uh, use a good charging cable and then we are going to get into the OS settings. So let's get into that particular activity right now. Right. So the first thing you'd want to do in your Mac operating system, the current operating system I'm using for your reference is Mac OS Ventura 13.6.4. But I've tested this out on a lot of Mac systems. So first of all, you want to go to your audio MIDI setup. Now, this is where you will find your audio devices Another shortcut for this would be command one to open your audio devices if it's not seen already and command two will open up your MIDI studio, which we don't really need for this MIDI studio is when you're connecting MIDI devices like MIDI controllers or um, other drum machines and uh, so on and so forth. <clears throat> Now, MIDI Studio is where you're connecting your Bluetooth MIDI devices, your drum machines, your MIDI controllers and other such things to work with music production. So I'm going to leave that aside. What you want to do is come to audio devices and what Mac has is they have this feature called aggregate IO. Aggregate IO basically means you can take two audio interfaces. In this case, you're taking the Zen Studio, which is my current audio interface and aggregating it or adding it to my iPad as well as my iPhone if I want for the purpose of audio in and out. Okay. So as you can see, the iPad and iPhone are grayed out. That's because they are not enabled. So what I will then do is first of all, let me enable my iPad. So as you can see, the iPad comes up here. And if you haven't already, you need to tick the iPad. So once you tick it, you'll be good to go. And the iPad clearly shows you two inputs. But what I've gone ahead and done is I've already named my inputs. You can just go here and call it iPad L, iPad R. Super easy. Just go here and type whatever you want. So then when you're recording data into your DAW, you can clearly see which is the iPad input. And now if I enable my iPhone, you'll see which is my iPhone input, right? And I can even disable the iPhone. I can do whatever I want really. So I'm going to come to the iPhone setup later. Let's keep it simple. First of all, with the iPad gadget. So it's Zen Studio playback with the iPad and I've named it conveniently as Zen plus Apple. What is Zen Studio again? Zen Studio is my audio interface. This is the audio interface I use for music production. Now you might have a Focusrite, you might have a Mackie, you might have, uh, you might have a Behringer, you might have uh, an Apollo device, whatever it may be, it will show up here and you want to aggregate that or add it to the iPad. And to do that from scratch, you can hit this plus button and create aggregate device. That's pretty much what I did. So you create aggregate device and you can do this whole activity again. I've already done it. So I'm not, uh, this is the one I did. Now my Zen Studio audio interface has 24 ins. But with the iPad, we are adding those extra two, which is why it shows up here as 26. So this is the only operating system setup you would need to do. Apart from that, of course, you have your keyboard, which is already connected. So 
assuming that is already done so after all of this is over we can open up our door and what you're trying to tell your door in this case i'm opening up reaper this is reaper without any track so it just looks like nothing much the first thing you want to do in reaper is to select your audio device so i go to audio under preferences that's a command comma shortcut on mac and then i go to audio go to device and you need to choose this aggregate device in this case zen plus apple so i tick that request block size i keep this to 128 so then the latency is less and hit apply and there we go we have now made an audio interface which is an aggregate of my hardware actual audio interface alongside the ipad tablet okay now that's the audio settings we also have some midi to deal with so midi inputs you don't have to do much if you already connected your midi controllers in this case i have a roland rd88 and i have a yamaha ck88 both are connected via a simple midi uh, so via a simple usb cable i've installed the drivers and because of that i can record input midi input from either of these devices what you want to focus on when it comes to getting your ipad to receive midi would be under midi outputs so under apple inc dash ipad you need to tick enable here now you can even double click the settings and i would recommend you to enable output to this device as well as open device in low latency or low precision mode this means it'll just it, it, when you play something you'll hear it immediately that's basically what you call least latency between playing and hearing back input and output so tick this and this to do that you can double click and there we go you're configuring midi output you'll have to figure out how to do this on your respective door but with reaper it's pretty easy you just go to midi inputs that's sorted midi outputs is what we are focusing on now and i basically i'm, I'm going to send the midi input in this case either one of my keyboards the yamaha ck88 or the rd88 i'm going to send it to this ipad so the ipad becomes my midi output it receives the signal so i have to enable it to receive the signal uh, and if ever my iphone was connected it will also have the opportunity to receive signal from any of my midi devices so i'm just gonna it says not found because i haven't connected it later on in the video i'll try and show you that now you hit okay and now it's just a matter of cleverly making up making some tracks so make a track double click so i'm going to call this uh keyboard midi okay so this is the midi information which will be sent from my keyboard to my uh, ipad in this case i hit record arm i need to make sure my midi is my midi controller i could also make it midi all midi inputs Okay, so you have your MIDI working as you can see by this meter. Okay, now I need to get the iPad to receive this. Fine. And just to give you a better visualization, I'm going to open up Jordan Tron, which has a nice keyboard view. So you can see that when I'm playing, it actually will pop up here. Now, when I play directly on the iPad, you can see the keys light up because my fingers are actually hitting it. But now I want to get the MIDI from here to there. Mind you, no cables other than the charging cable has been used for this. So to do that, make another track. I'm making another track and this is going to be an audio track because I want to actually hear the sound of the iPad. So I go, I arm it. First, before that, let me name it iPad audio. This seems to be easy. Hit arm and change my input to stereo. And you see what's happening here. Input one to iPad gets to show up. Now, if I play Jordan Tron or this app from my <clears throat> iPad itself with my fingers, I already get the sound. So if this is what you want, if you just want to play the iPad literally on the iPad and record it then and there, you don't have, you can just start 
using it right away. But here's what's even cool. With the same charging cable, I'm going to play this keyboard in front of me, which is my master DAW MIDI keyboard. And I want that to control this Jordan Tron app because obviously I'm a piano player. I don't want to go and, you know, play on an iPad. That, that's a bit weird. So what I then do is a simple routing mechanism from the MIDI. Now, the input is set up, but the output is not set up. So on Reaper, what we need to do is we go to the hardware output options, MIDI hardware output, and you see here it says no output. I want you to tick. Apple Inc. iPad. So uh, immediately you'll see a blue sign here, <clears throat> blue bar, Apple Inc. iPad. And now if I play, see what's happening. I'm playing on my MIDI keyboard and you'll see the lights show up on the iPad. That shows that I'm getting sound from the iPad to come back and there is no audible latency and I'm not using a great set of computers I'm using a simple Mac mini and yes my iPad is good it's an M1 Pro but even with a normal iPad I've tested this out on basic devices the latency is perfect it's almost like the uh, sound is on board the keyboard so to speak right so if I change my iPad now uh, my iPad patch to something else let's say a geo shred now I could still choose to play it from this keyboard uh, but what I've done in the settings is to just kind of allow me to play it on both the iPad because these apps are very good. They've been designed for you to actually use the iPad itself. So let me just take a cello. So. So the interface of the iPad is really good to play certain apps like a Geo Shred, which I use very often. Now on the same track, if for example, you want to uh, also put on a normal virtual instrument, like how you would do, you can go to effects or however you do it. You can load up any old virtual instrument. And if you ask me, it's going to, it's going to still work. So check this out. I have piano working from my I have piano working from my uh, existing MIDI app or my existing VST app as we call it called Piano Tech and I have iPad audio coming in and I can actually blend these two sounds and record things pretty quickly. So if you want to do this really fast, I've made a track preset in Reaper. If any of you are interested, you can drop me a note. I can show you how I set that up. Uh, it's just called iPad. So I just double click it and it comes directly. Right. So if it worked for an iPad, why can't it work for an iPhone, right? Apple, same ecosystem. So where I found this pretty handy and where I'm considering this use case is if I'm going live and let's say if my laptop crashes or my entire MIDI rig is completely messed up and I don't have any useful onboard sounds, I just want something basic. I could open GarageBand, which is free, or I could open an app called Piano Tech, which is really good for piano. Hats off to Modart, the makers of this amazing uh, virtual piano app. What happens is if you buy the subscription for your uh, laptop or your Mac, you can also use it for the iOS uh, device, which is really amazing. So I, I figured, yeah, I have my phone at my concert, put it on airplane mode, obviously, and then just keep it connected to the laptop just as a fail fail safe mechanism and let's see if the same thing works so i go to audio midi setup as usual in this case i now need to enable my iphone and i go to that same zen apple uh, uh, aggregate io i tick my iphone 
because I want to use that now for aggregate and <clears throat> let's see if it shows up. Just a few small tweaks you might have to make. The MIDI hardware output should not be iPad. It should be iPhone. So you just change it from Apple Link iPad to Apple Link iPhone. And then the iPad audio should now be iPhone audio, which should be the iPhone audio channel, which is enabled there. And now here's what's really cool. The sound of this piano is the same piano that I have on my computer system. It's called Piano Tech. So just to show you, I can just find some other patches. And again, the latency is very, very manageable. It's more than manageable. So, right guys. So hope you found this workflow useful. So in conclusion, you're able to connect any iOS device to your Apple computer, whatever it may be, using just the charging cable. And what do you get out of that? You get to charge it, which is pretty cool, that you already know. Then you get to send audio from the device to your DAW using just as the simple aggregate I.O. feature. And last but not least, you can play MIDI from anywhere, any MIDI connected device, and send the output of that back into your iOS devices. So hope you found this workflow useful and I will catch you in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for regular notifications. And if you like us to cover a few other tech tutorials, which we don't do a lot on our channel, our channel focuses a lot on ear training, music theory, piano lessons, accompaniment and so on. If you enjoy this tech stuff, if you're a music producer, so do leave us some suggestions in the comments and we'll be sure to consider them. Thanks a ton for watching the video. Cheers.